TripAdvisor calls us one of the top 10 ghost tours in the U.S. for good reason. Not only are our guides the best storytellers in the business, several attract a lot of things themselves. Book your tour now at ChattanoogaGhostTours.com. Chattanooga Ghost Tours offers not only award-winning tours, we are the first ghost tour in the world to offer investigations and ghost hunts using amazing tools such as the Talking Ophelous and the new Ultimate Hunt with SLS Ghost Mapping. Show yourself again? Yes. Book now. the 80s? Do you like heavy metal? Do you like the dark side? <laughs> then you need to add some trace to your spooky season with the trace book series by Mandy L. Contrell. It all began with Trace and the Devil. It's 1988 at Fairview High School and bad boy Trace has found the girl of his dreams. Will she love him in return despite his dark connections? How far will he go for love? <laughs> this first Trace book and the second and third are all available on Amazon and in select stores. These books are being compared to The Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt, Tales from the Dark Side, and Creep Show. So follow Trace if you dare. <laughs> Welcome back to the Horror Sanctum Podcast. I'm Jay with John and TJ. Uh, and this week we are joined by the lovely and talented actress, Miss Robin Sidney, uh, who has worked on numerous television series and films, including the Puppet Master, Evil Bong, and Ginger Dead Man franchises, just to name a few. Uh, Robin, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the Sanctum. Thank you for having me. I'm like so excited. Woohoo! And we we are more than excited uh, to have you. Like uh, I said before we started recording, we just watched the uh, the thing with Joe Bob is I try to save him, 
because when they when they're gone, they're gone. So I haven't watched the your episode yet. I just watched it yesterday, and like you were one of the most energetic and fun guests he's had on there. So it was it was a lot of fun, and I love Ginger Dead Man anyway. So it was a win win for me. Um, also, congrats on your uh, recent nuptials. Uh, you married the incomparable Charles Band back in December. Um, we of course here at the show are huge fans. I actually just read his book last year, and and no joke, it's one of my favorite books I've ever read. And I don't know if this is funny. It's funny to me. I was a huge The Calling fan. And yeah, I had no so was I. clue that was his son. No clue. So when I got to that part, I just like, I dropped the book. I went to get my wife. I'm like, you are not going to believe what I just read in this book. <laughs> that blew my mind. Uh, and so that was awesome. But we're not here to talk about him. We're here to talk about you. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into that. And uh, TJ, you can start us off. All right. Yes, it is wonderful to be here with the lovely Miss Robin Sidney, who I affectionately like to call the Scream Queen of Full Moon Pictures. Yeah. Uh, and yes, uh, since since Jay talked about Ginger Dead Man, Ginger Dead Man's one of my favorite Full Moon Pictures. I saw it when it first came out, about 2005, 2006. And I, I'm an old school Gary Busey fan. And, and when I heard the story that... Uh, it, it was kind of like on a whim. I think I read that Ch Charles had just offered him like 25 K or something to, to be in a movie for a day and didn't think yeah. he'd say yes. And then he said yes. And so yeah. <laughs> had to pull it together. And, and it was a great use of, of Gary. And, and basically it's, it's the, it's the child's play with a gingerbread man, basically. Yeah. And, and the, the longevity they've been able to get with that, franchise and then to kind of intertwine it with the evil bong franchise to come along about mm -hmm. the same time and you and both of those uh, original movies tell me uh tell us how you got started with with full moon i know you did some some smaller acting roles and some tv stuff uh yeah. before that yeah it was um i got an audition and for the ginger dead man i'm like this is so funny and random and I went to the audition and I remember I was super, super nervous. I don't know why, but I was. And then when I got in, he's like, okay, so you're going to have a Southern accent. I was like, oh, no problem. <laughs> I had no idea that I was going to be Southern. And then um, we start and literally the phone rings during the audition. And the guy's like, oh, hold on, hold on. Let, let me go get the phone. I'm like, oh, okay. And it was almost like the best thing ever because then my nerves like stopped all of a sudden. I was like comfortable and stuff. And then um, go back again, like to the beginning of the scene. And then the phone rings again and he's like, hold on a minute. And he goes and then, and then by the third time I uh, go, it's ringing. He's like, oh, I'll just let it go. So literally my first audition, the phone is ringing and like all this experience. I'm like, I am definitely not getting this. It was a bad audition. And I get a call back and I actually get multiple callbacks. And um, I was, so I had booked the lost first. I filmed it after the ginger dive man. So I was like prepping the loss. I was like, it would be so funny if I got this random ginger dead man movie and they kept just bringing me back bringing me back and and then I remember reading the final audition I have brown hair but everybody they kept they had in there was blonde I was like oh definitely not getting it definitely not getting it um there was this guy in the waiting room and we were just kind of running lines it turns out he ended up booking it I ended up booking it and they gave me the script on like a Sunday and they're like oh yeah we're starting tomorrow on Monday I was like oh like cram lines in my head <laughs> So it was super fun. And that was like the first feature film. Yeah, because I had done other projects and like TV shows and everything. So that was the first one I filmed. I saw, I think, was it the first thing you ever did was kind of a bit part on the Andy Dick show? I did do the Andy Dick show. I feel like he's such a character. You must have a story there. Oh, yeah. I have so many stories. Like, I feel like him oh. and Gary Busey are like cousins or something. I swear. <laughs> but like... Um, they go to the same therapist, I think. Yeah, yeah. He was super intense and just like wanted to be in his trailer. And I barely even got to know him. He's like, blah, blah, blah. and then just like in his trailer um, so much of the time. But I remember in one of the scenes, he had to be on my shoulder, like, because I was like the devil or something. And he was like, I don't know. It was like, what would Andy Dick do or something like this? And so I didn't actually have to be in the scene with him when he was on my shoulder because it was like, 
you know, later. But then I did another one where I had to do the scene with him. But I, I remember I had to get like red eyes, like contact lenses fitted for my eyeballs. Um, but yeah, Andy Dick was crazy for sure. Gary Busey takes the cake, no pun intended. But like, yeah, Andy Dick was intense <laughs> for sure. And that, and that leads into my next question. You yeah. must have at least one good Gary Busey story. Oh, yeah. He's he's quite the intense character. I've met him at at some cons before, and him and his son Jake are both kind of intense. Yeah, I've never met his son, but he is he's just definitely the scariest guy I've ever met in my life. And I had to work with him for one day. <laughs> and I remember when we got to set first, they basically Charlie was like, my mom came to set with me, and basically Charlie's like, you warning us like stay away from him. He's got a reputation, like just do your thing, whatever. And he wanted to get all his stuff out of the way in the morning, just in case Gary like went crazy and like left or something. And, um, I remember Gary's like, Oh, this script, this script like sucks. Uh, I got to make it up. And he was like, got the teardrops and stuff. And, and then every take he did was completely different from the next. And then, um, we broke for lunch and I'm going, you know, this way and Gary's like calling my name like Robin, Robin like come to the trail I pretend like I don't hear him just like walk <laughs> you know get my food and then um come back and he's like he's like come in my trailer like and he's like literally grabbing me like in his trailer like this my mom is pulling me like we're literally playing tug of war like this and he's like I'm gonna report you to the director and the producer I'm like that's totally fine because he told me to stay out of his trailer so so then um basically Charlie comes he's like it's okay like he just wants to talk about the carriage blah 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 so I go up into the trailer Gary goes up into the trailer Charlie is going up into the trailer Gary pushes him out of the down the stairs locks the door and I'm inside and I'm like freaking out I literally have my fists up like this and it's like it's like looks like a bedroom it's like his bed there there's a kitchen and like a little a dining room table thing. So I'm like in the dining room table, like full on like fist bump. He's like, what's up with your mom? I'm like, oh, my mom, like in the character. He's like, no, your mom. I was like, aren't we talking about the characters? He was like, I was like, oh yeah. He's like, I'm feeling like doing an exercise. And I was like, oh, okay. It's like freaking out. He's like, oh, like this crazy exercise. Now I literally, cause I was so scared. Now this is so weird. I just start cry laughing. Cause I'm trying not to laugh, but like just cry laughing. It sounds really bad outside. It looks bad. The, sh the trailer's like shaking. It's like, oh, ooh, ah, ooh. like it sounds really bad outside. My mom apparently is like freaking out. And so they make up that they have to go to set. Like Charlie knocks on the door like, oh, it's time to go to set. Even though it wasn't time to go to set. And Gary walks out and he's fully sweaty. I have tears because of the cry laughing. And then Gary's like, nothing happened, nothing happened. <laughs> and then basically right after that was when we filmed the opening scene of the Ginger Dead Man. I did not have to act zero. I just looked at him and I was so scared. I was like, stay away from me. I'm so glad I didn't have to be in love with him or something like that. <laughs> and then basically the whole movie like is filmed with this puppet, right? So all his lines are like, do, do, do. So apparently Charlie was like freaking out about filming this because every line's different. And Gary walks in apparently with a guitar and he's like, feeling music. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then they're like, um, yeah, so how, he's like, how long do you think it's going to be for today? Because I got a chick coming and I need to like, whatever. And he, um, he was like, I don't know. How long do you think it's going to take Gary? He's like, oh, well, I have to be out of here in an hour. And then like, they're like, oh you know and then basically like he does the page like boom 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 perfect perfect, perfect. And, like clockwork this chick apparently not the prettiest chick like shows up and like he's <laughs> no left so it was definitely the craziest I remember we did have to do a signing with him once he was sitting next to me and I was like ah! <laughs> um yeah and, he, awesome. and and did he scary. actually do all the voice over for the gender dead man in that first yeah. movie? Cause I know they've gotten in somebody sure. else to do it for the other ones. I think, yeah, that was a smart decision to have the other ones not be Gary, but yeah, to my understanding, all of, all of the gender dead man in the first one is Gary's voice. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And a great use of, I mean, just indie filmmaking one oh one. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure <laughs> that's, that's a wild story. I'm sure uh, being on set, that was uh, 
No acting required, as you say, yeah, cowering in the corner, <laughs> crying. Oh my God, this is so scary. Oh my, scary. So, so how did that film end up parlaying into a, a, a professional relationship with, with Charles and, and doing yeah. more full moon pictures and kind of becoming the the go-to girl for these franchises? I mean, it was like, so, and it was very, like, obviously we're married now, but it was very professional the whole time. Like he never did anything, you know, Holly weird, just so you, everybody knows. Um, but it was very professional. And so I think the next movie we did, I think was Evil Bong, but I don't remember the sequence. I think so. Yeah. Cause that was like the next year, I think 2005 yeah, and, that, and 2006. Yeah. And I didn't audition for that one. That was just like, here's the part, which happens oftentimes, even with the other horror movies I've done. It's like, once you kind of get to know the director producer, then they're kind of like, think of you for another movie but yeah I just kind of kept asking me hey do you want to do this part I'm like woohoo <laughs> yeah, and the next one we're doing is Barbenheimer so which I'm very excited so, for that tell us um, a little bit about your uh go ahead Jen well I was gonna say one of my questions involved you auditioning so since you just said it I'm just gonna ask it real quick oh, yeah. um, one of my favorite full moon uh flicks is trophy heads and yeah. you have a very very small role in that so I was just curious for stuff like that is yeah. that something where you see a script or you you catch wind of you're like I want to be in this or is it something where Charles or the director comes to you like hey come be in this movie? Yeah, well that so that I usually the parts come to me. It's rare where I'm like I need to be in this please <laughs> like can I please 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 be in this. Um, but that one is pretty cool. So that that was the audition in the audition obviously. So he got like all the screen queens that he's been working with, you know, all of them in that. So that was actually super fun. And then obviously um, Stuart Gordon was the director that we got to work with in that. And it was, that was just so much fun. R.I.P. Stuart yeah, Gordon. Great, great, that great. was just an offer. Yeah. 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 That was super fun. Now, Barbenheimer, on the other hand, I was like really wanting to be <laughs> And um, so I actually, and because Ted Nicola was directing it. So I, I knew that they were working on the script and I was kind of like, hey, Ted. Well, first Charlie had kind of hinted like, oh yeah, it'd be great to have you, you know, Barbie and Kendra somehow in this movie. And I was like, sounds great. Then I talked to Ted, I was like, hey, so um, Charlie literally would love for me to be in this movie. And then, um, then they ended up writing a whole part. So I haven't read the script yet, which I'm really looking forward to reading, but we're shooting in April. So I'm really excited about that. Oh, wow. But I think all the other ones just came as offers, except for that one. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about your uh, you have a continuing series and the the Barbie and Kendra, Kendra series. Yeah, some of those are titled very interestingly. So I, I want to know more about this series. Yeah, they're so much fun. Like we started at the beginning of the pandemic, basically shut down. Literally, the shutdown happened, and Charlie's like, "I guess we're filming." <laughs> um, and I was too scared the first one, like to just go anywhere so I did it on the phone literally it was like all myself when I recorded the lines because he um, made corona zombies, zombies like the first yeah. thing right corona zombies which won some film threat or some kind of award for like best movie or something I so. enjoyed that one that was a fun flick and I love Cody yeah. like your your oh, yeah. part yeah she's I love Cody she's amazing she's so good to work with too like so easy but I think Billy Butler and Charlie got together and like okay this pandemic's happening what do we do? How do we make a movie um, with, you know, we need a day shoot. <laughs> like, how do we go about doing this? Um, and then that they came up with that kind of like a Woody Allen style and to have like the extra movies folded in. And so every time something big would happen, then Charlie would be like, okay, let's do the next Barbie and Kendra. But this next, this one that we're just finished is super, super exciting. It's called Barbie and Kendra crash joe bob's drive-in and that came about because um joe bob has like a drive-in uh, event where like fans come and like you know do the little thing on the stage and like signings it's super cool and there's a told drive-in movie theater and they he asked charlie to come do a like a speechy thing like <laughs> on the stage and charlie's like well instead of doing the speechy thing on the stage can we just film a movie 
during your drive-in at the drive-in. <laughs> Joe Bob's like, sure, do whatever you want. So it was so crazy because we're literally at this real drive-in. People, fans, everybody coming in while we're filming the movie. It was super loud. I'm sure we're going to have to do lots of audio like because they're singing crazy songs and doing all this stuff um, while we're, you know, filming this thing. And so it's going to be really fun, though. I had a blast doing it. And we got to work with Joe Bob and Diana. And it was super fun. I'm so is it, is it going to be a feature length or just kind of a short? Um, no, it is a feature length of probably a shorter feature length. Um, but it's similar to the other ones where we're watching the movies, but this in this time it's a drive-in movie. Um, so Cody actually has a Harley. She drives a motorcycle. And she's in fact done a TV show where she drove it all the way to Chicago. Oh wow. And so they're like, let's put this um motorcycle in this movie. Now I've never been on a motorcycle before. So we have to do these scenes like only 20 minutes we filmed i had like pulled muscle like my whole like <laughs> my side just from trying to hold on to this motorcycle and so i don't know how that's gonna look it's pro probably cody's gonna be like like her hair blowing away i'm gonna be like <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> but it's so fun it's just fun being like ditzy and well i don't really have to work really hard to do that part but but you're <laughs> you're you're a really good actress because you're not really ditzy at all as Aww. some of your characters are because you're actually a very talented businesswoman and i've just learned this recently that was it you and your mother when you were pretty young created this yep. company called zorbits that's correct yeah how, how old were you when you created this and tell us a little bit about what all you do because it's a lot yeah. It's super fun. Um, so we started from nothing, from $100 in our one-bedroom apartment when I was 19. And I don't want to date myself, but that, <laughs> we've had our business for like 20 years. Um, and it's been amazing. So it, we sell Impulse products. So it's basically like under $10 retail. And literally, I didn't know anything. It was like no soliciting. I just walked in, and, you know, like, oh, do you want our products? You know, um, and I feel like when I'm selling, it's like acting. Like, I do feel like I'm acting, honestly. I'm like, hey, you know, it's like improv, but it's super fun. And we sell all kinds of um, impulse products for kids. We have like squishy toys. And I just came back from the Vegas show. And yeah, so I do that both that and acting at the same time. What I think is cool, because I am a former school teacher and principal, and I, I worked a lot with special ed kids and stuff at different yes. times. And you have a lot of like uh, sensory uh, toys and fidgets and different things like that for a variety Definitely. of different uh, kids, like on the spectrum or ADHD. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that market? Yeah. So um, my, actually my sister's an occupational therapist. Okay. And yeah, and it was like one day I, it was actually our first toy. It's called Twiddle. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I just saw it and I just drew it on this piece of paper. And then we got um, like a guy, it's a, called CAD. It turns into like a 3D model. So our first product was this fidget toy that you can make shapes. And it really has helped so many people. Um, not one won like the brainchild award and stuff. So then like we started expanding on that total program. So it's like very sensory. And I feel like most of our stuff is sensory because it's like they're quiet fidgets. And then obviously fidgets became really popular, obviously. So it kind of expanded into all, you know, everybody, but it it is interesting. And I feel, and we all oftentimes will send it to my sister and she'll use it with her students and yeah. That's, that's, really, that's cool. really cool. And you also make jewelry that mm -hmm. that has been worn and photographed with major A-listers like Miley yeah. Cyrus and a number of other people I was seeing. How did was yeah. was did you start with toys? Did you start with jewelry? What was the progression there? Oh yeah. Um yeah, I started with we started with jewelry. Um actually our first product is a feng shui luck charm. And that is still one of our best products. So we started in the adult like gift world and then moved into um yeah, into kids and we do both. So it started in adult jewelry, which I'm wearing. Um and then moved into kids and both. But it's super fun. I have such a great time because I get to be creative, sell, and then act and then like, you know. 
it's just, it's definitely, I've always loved to sell. Even as a kid, I was like Girl Scout cookies, like knocking on everybody's door, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I can tell you're a great salesperson. I just have fun. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's like helping people, right? Find good stuff for their store. Yeah. So when you were little, uh, were you, were you much of a horror fan? Were you a theater kid? What kind of got you into acting and were you the genre, I guess you could say? Yeah, th that's a good question. It's kind of split in two parts because I was so afraid of scary movies as a kid. Like, honestly, terrified. In mm. fact, I didn't watch them because I watched The Exorcist once and I was so freaked out. It was like in a cabin in the woods. And every time she turned her head in a circle, I would like close my eyes. And then all the girls that were with me were screaming. So my imagination went psycho. And I was so afraid. I think I slept in my mom's bed like for two months or something. There was this picture on the wall of me and it looked like her. And it literally freaked me out. And I remember I actually auditioned for the exorcism of Emily Rose and I almost booked, it. I was like second choice. Oh, wow. thought, okay. Please dear God, please don't give me this part. Like, please. I would, I feel like I would have just been messed in the head or something, but I was so afraid of horror. And then I remember, um, I got foot surgery and I was like, I'm going to get, use this time to get over my horror fears. And I just watched like a million horror movies, like back to back to back to back when I was a teenager. And that, allowed me to not be as freaked out but I did start acting when I was eight and um, I did like children's theater at first mm -hmm. and it was like a professional children's group where we would like actually serve lunch like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or whatever with the play so you kind of mm -hmm. do both um and Jessica Beale she grew up with me and she went to my school so I did like almost everything there is to do in Colorado is where I grew up in Boulder and mm -hmm. lots. I mean, I played like the Virgin Mary. I did often Bible adventures. There was a lot of like religious stuff that I did there. That's like basically most of the work or you do industrials. I actually did a sexual education video. Oh, wow, and okay. Then my high school picked it up and oh, awkward. <laughs> I didn't have like an SCD or something in the, in the sexual education video. <laughs> But I was a prude and I was afraid of sex. So I'm literally like in my high school, like I'm afraid <laughs> of sex. And they were playing it <laughs> in my high school. It was so embarrassing. Um, so you, your earlier stuff that you just mentioned, did you work with any puppets back then? It was like nothing mm -hmm. that led to your career now <laughs> where you work with no, a lot of puppets? No, no puppets. No. Well, the only, I will say this, their production was super tiny. So I remember even one time I held my own like reflector light. <laughs> to imagine everybody there. Um, there was no puppets or dolls. No, but I almost booked some big movies like what woman wants. Like, so there were certain movies that came to Colorado. They would do like, you know, like United States kind of going around. And then I was like, I, so my grandma lived in California. So we came to vacation. I was like, I need to get an agent. So I, mm. I got one and I was like, mom, this is my senior of high school. We need to move to California. My mom's like, you are not moving unless your principal tells you that you can move and you can still graduate at the same school and, and, and I was like, okay, great. So I had a meeting with my principal. I was like, can I just like go to California and can I just like still graduate here and do all this stuff? She's like, sure. I was like, woohoo. So I told my mom, I was like, we're moving to California. <laughs> And, um, and Jessica Beale's parent and mom was really helpful and basically kind of helped me like do this, 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 this. Um, but yeah, I mean, the horror genre is just kind of like, I started booking, I mean, Drake and Josh, I did that show and I did a bunch of episodes, but then I just started booking the horror and it's mm -hmm. like, once you're in that world, it's like the world finds you basically, you know, and you get a lot of opportunities and auditions and booking. So it was like, you know. I guess this is my new world and I love the horror genre and the people when I go to these conventions are just so nice like the nicest people it's like a family like you just feel like your instant family mm -hmm. is the best you know the best thing ever yeah yeah and it seems like doing plays and being in that world really does sort of prep you for anything because I feel like Plays can be so outrageous, right? So many <laughs> stories. I mean, horror movies can be outrageous, but sometimes you look at a play and the script, it's just like, what the hell is this, right? So <laughs> that probably gets you ready for this world of horror. 
I don't know how you feel about that, but except yeah. Gary Busey, it doesn't prepare yeah. you for Gary Busey. No, <laughs> like real life work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is interesting though because in life, you know, some crazy stuff happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it, I'm like, it's so I'm always like, oh, this is like a movie, <laughs> like you know, because like you're basically when you're doing a horror movie, you're like living it, like take yeah. after take, and it is scary stuff sometimes, like. You know, and I definitely have nightmares while I'm filming for certain, like definitely. Yeah. So when you, um, I, I'm a big fan of Masters of Horror. A lot of us, a lot of genre fans are, and that, I, I thought that show was great. Um, when you did the episode, you were on uh, Right to Die, correct? Yeah, good job. Um, so that one, what was that like coming on set? Was that to you, was that like a movie or were they like, hey, this is an anthology? Like, how did that get presented yeah. to you at the time I wonder yeah um well because I auditioned for that one and it was like it was like a movie mm -hmm. and I didn't even know that it was a series until we were filming and there was like oh we're gonna have a party with all the other episodes I was like oh wait what <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um so I didn't I guess I didn't do my homework but yeah it was just um it was done as as a movie it felt like a movie we filmed it in Canada mm -hmm. I have some crazy, <laughs> some crazy story. I don't know if I should tell them, but actually I should. Um, so basically, <laughs> my character in that show is basically, I'm like kind of sexy and like kind of like, I don't know, trying to win over this dude. Mm -hmm. And they basically told me that if I, if I really want to feel my character, I should go to a strip club and... Um, and experience what it's like to be at a strip club which I had never been to and I'm in Canada uh -huh. and so I was like okay um sorry I moved my computer oh, yeah. um and so, so this I was before Evil Bob then uh I believe probably 2004 2005 maybe yeah I think it was probably before I don't know, the chronological in my brain is like kind of it's a blur um but <laughs> but yeah so went to the strip club and yeah, I, I was like, well, I guess I need to experience my character. So they're like, oh yeah, you can come up on stage if you want. You can dance. It's just like, you have to take off at least something. So wow. I did. I did go on the stage at the strip club and I took <laughs> off my top and then there was money being thrown into the stage. <laughs> and I remember it's just when we were filming, it's just all I could think about is like, I really don't don't know that I, I just need to be with this guy so that I don't have to be on the strip club and I, it really helped me they were they told me I needed to do I was like okay fine I'll do this but I do remember when you film in Canada everybody stays at the same hotel mm -hmm. and it's called the Sutton Hotel and oops sorry I'm trying to make it um I may need to charge my computer give me two seconds yeah. hold on a second. Right. I guess I think we're almost, is that good? Oh, wait, maybe not. Okay, I may need to go to a different charger, but so after these messages. So basically, um, everybody at the Sutton Hotel, they all um, stay there. So I remember like, I was in the elevator and there's this dude, and he looks familiar and we're like doing the back and forth thing. Like, who are you, you know? And he's like, and we're like, where do you, you live in LA? Da, da, da. And by the bottom of the elevator is like, oh my God, it's Benicio del Toro. And then I was like, so we walked into this workout room and the, this dude's like, yo, you don't know Benicio, yo, he's the man, yo. And he said his name was Ice Cube. And I literally didn't know who Ice Cube was. And then later, I didn't know who Ice Cube is. So it was really interesting because it's like this whole, you know, world where just people stay. And so it's kind of like surreal, but it was a super fun experience. I loved doing that movie. And Martin Donovan's amazing. And he made it super easy to, yeah. to work. Yeah, it's a great show, and it's 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 one of those you could tell almost like Tales from the Crypt, where I could see actors coming in and not necessarily being told like you know thinking it's a film because it it is like a film, like the episodes are so long and it's not really short form. So that's yeah. Um, I wanted to know also one one more thing, and I know Jay's got some stuff to ask. Yeah. You know, you worked on ER for an episode. I just wanted to know what was that like. Yeah. working on ER, getting to see the cast, you know, it's been on for so long and 
I think you were in a later season, correct? Um, yeah, I don't know later or earlier, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was super, it was cool because I was just beginning to, so I was like, woohoo, like ER was like a big opportunity. And I remember my character, I was like, I was popular. And then there was a girl who was like not popular. This is the characters. And it was, I think I like hit her in my car or something. And we had to go to the ER and my legs were hurting or something. And I had to be on the stretcher. And I was, so, <laughs> I was so like kind of like method at that time where I literally stuck a rubber bands on my leg to, to feel <laughs> this is so weird. I don't do this anymore, but at a, you know, you, you grow as an artist. I literally put a rubber band so I could feel the pain <laughs> at the end of the day, like had this whole way, like, red mark of rubber bands on my leg. And I'm like You're doing the Daniel day Lewis treatment, yeah. <laughs> but it was super fun. It was super fun. I was really excited too. Cause I could tell people like, Hey, in Colorado, look at ER, you know, it's like one of my first things here. So it's super awesome. Um, so I'm going to relocate my computer just because relocate. that plug is not working and I don't want to lose you guys. So stay tuned with me. <laughs> I'm going to be moving. I hope you're not too dizzy. Let's just turn it to an episode of MTV Cribs. I know. It's like <laughs> MTV Robin. Okay, uh, there we go. The Blair right, Witch so, Project. I know. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, I would, I don't know if you actually said the words out loud, but I would assume Gary Busey is the scariest person you've encountered. It is. 100%. So that leads me to ask, who's the nicest, oh, yeah. kindest person that you've worked with? And you can't say Charles. That's cheating. <laughs> uh, wow. You know, there's so many nice people. It's hard. It's literally such a hard question because I feel like when you're filming, it's like the people you're working with, it's family. Because you're hanging out with them, you're like there, you're sharing this like really intense bond, basically. I, the nicest person, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that question because there's so many people. It's like a huge list. I mean, I just yeah. love the people I work with, except for maybe Gary B. <laughs> I, uh, I had money on Michael Berryman. Oh yeah, he, wow, so nice. I do have a funny Sid Haig story because when we filmed that movie, um, Sid Haig, he ate Dan like strawberry Dan and yogurt in between this take. Is this and the Night of the Living Dead 3D thing? Uh, no, uh, it's the Haunted like Casino. Living Dead. It Haunted was, yeah, Casino. Oh, you know. Dead Man's Hand is another, I think it came out. Yeah, it's, it got changed Dead the title. And literally like the we go straight from him eating the strawberry ice cream to like we're doing the take and he licks my face in the scene <laughs> and it was literally like this strawberry dan and yogurt chunky monkey on my face so, <laughs> never I ha it was like strawberry the rest of the day and i tried to wipe it off but it was like thick and dan and yogurt <laughs> i do remember that i was like oh my goodness uh, yeah michael berry man said heck both those guys super nice such sweet, sweet people. And um, yeah, John Rinky, we we work gotta work with him. Like he has like no legs. I'm like, I don't even know how. And he brought like a tiger in his hat, a tiger whisker for Cody and I, and he's like gave it to us. I'm like, I don't know, just such nice, nice people, really honestly. Yeah, it's good to hear, you know, you just never know about people. I the reason I asked about Michael Barham is I actually just finished his memoir and I don't know if you've read it, but it's amazing. So um he just seems I've met him once and I'm like that guy he just seems like legit like some people like some people are nice and but when you really get to know him not so much but he just <laughs> was always up there for me so I was just curious yeah so sweet just like the sweetest dude honestly yeah and then uh we'll wrap things up with just one more question this is another tough one this is what I like to ask guests is like do you have a particular role that you favor more than the others like is there one that's more near and dear to your heart that you've done <laughs> or, or or have coming up yeah um that's a good question so I feel like I always was kind of loving like the ch more challenging ones where it's like, you know, you have a childhood that's all kind of messed up and you have to get through all this stuff. And that was always my go-to, but now I'm just loving being ditzy. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just really love it. It's just so fun. And I don't know. I do like complex characters where you don't really know, you know, you think one thing and then it's really another. So there, there's a deep thing. Um, cause that's just so much fun to like create when you're, you know, prepping for a role. 
but I don't know. I'm just like loving being ditzy right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Awesome. All right. Well, that's going to be a wrap on this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to wherever you're listening to this podcast. Follow us on TikTok, on Instagram. Uh, join our Facebook group um, and uh, come back next week. Uh, Robin, thank you so much for taking some time with us. This was a lot of fun. Uh, before we let you go, you have any projects coming up you want to let everybody know about? Oh, yeah. Um, well, Barbie and Kendra at Crash Joe Bob's Drive-In is coming out Woo-hoo, this year. And then we're going to film Barbenheimer in April, which I am super excited about. And I get to play the part of Roz. So I'm really excited about that. So it's going to awesome. be super, super fun. So those are what's coming up. All right, we're looking forward to it, especially Joe Bob when we all love him dearly. So that, that'd be fun to watch. When you were doing that, did people know like the ones that were there just to attend? Did they're like, are you guys filming? Did they follow you around and make any issues? I mean, um, when we were doing the Barbie, the Barbie and Kendra Crash Joe Bob's drive-in? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because we were there with the camera crew and every all the fans. So even in between the takes, they were, oh, can I get your autograph? Or, <laughs> you know, like it was super, it was such an in, exciting experience it was so so cool but yeah Yeah. everybody knew because we were right there like (laughs) with everybody filming there at the event with cameras and everything all right well uh, again thank you so much um tell charlie we said hello Uh, signing off i'm jay with john robin and tj and until next time keep spooky Oh, we could. Let's do it. (laughs) Three, two, one. Boom.
whenever I saw it. It's worse with a clown. That, 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 that's where it lives. I can't imagine anything ever wanting to live there. Can you stop talking about this? I, 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 I can barely breathe. This is summer. We're kids. I can barely breathe. I'm having a fucking asthma attack. I'm not doing this. What the hell? Put the map back. Mm -mm. What happened? What's going on? I got it. Um, okay. Guys. Georgie. Well? Sleep in the dream, but I could feel that someone was awake in the house. I went into Dalton's room. There was something. It was standing there in the corner. I asked it, who are you? And it said, it was a visitor. I said, what do you want? It said Dalton. still hear that voice.
When the music stops, you see him in the mirror standing behind you. Okay. But you have to twist the key. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, I guess Rory doesn't want to see me, huh? Hmm. Oh, well. Can we play hide and clap? Hide and clap. Oh, Please, nobody ever lets me play. Okay, okay. <laughs> Remember, you get to ask me for three claps. Okay. One, One two, two, three. three. I'm going to go hide okay. now. Four, Four five. five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. First clap. Second clap. April. Third clap. <laughs> I'm gonna get you now. I can hear you breathing. Play hide and clap.
sound like that nigga Put the gun down before you kill someone. Teenage Girl's Diary. Hello, and welcome to another dollar store drive in. I'm your host, Laura. I'm Joel. And we're the newly dead. We are. Yay. Yeah. And we are bringing you another lovely half hour ish chat show where we discuss a movie that we watched in this case it was last night it was last night yes and uh we have some criteria for the movie so we either have to have it gifted to us yep need or if we buy it it has to be under five dollars and we have to have found it sometimes in the wild so it was some, when someone gifts it to us, I consider that the wild, don't you? It's wild enough. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. Uh, recently, my coworker, Ann, gave us some movies to watch. And so those are in the mix now. So uh, whenever we pull an Ann movie, we'll give her a shout out. There are some interesting things in there. So, yeah. Ann, thumbs up to you. Yeah. She's, she's pretty eclectic with her tastes of horror movies. And they're like right up our alley. So oh. thank you, Ann. <laughs> That's our new thing. Yeah, we big, like to big, big actually, it's mo up. mostly like that. <laughs> Shaggy wanted to get big thumbs that. ups. Yes, big thumbs ups. Um, and if this is Wednesday night, in theory, you should be able to come and chat with us at 6.30 p.m. Central Time mm -hmm. on TinglerTelevision.com. So Joel will throw that down here on the bottom. Which uh, also, incidentally, at this by the 11th of February, we should be back on Roku again. So... That will also be an option to watch it there. Fingers or crossed. Television.com, either one. If something changes, check our Facebook page, like it, uh, and get you know updated for, keep your eyes out for notifications, because I will try and keep that as up to date as possible. Yes. And they've been trying, mm -hmm. it's, Roku's got some new, um, I think, some legal things or whatever that you have to kind of cross your T's and dot your I's with and stuff. So it's just taking a little bit longer. It's not just Tingler Television. I think no. it's just kind of like across the board. Yes. Uh, Roku. So again, we appreciate Tingler Television so much. And um, they've been such a great uh, company to work with and work for. I guess we work for them. And, and we like our <laughs> Roku. Like I didn't have any desire to buy a Roku. And then she picked one up once we got on the channel because we wanted to be able to watch it. Yeah. I actually really enjoy the functionality of it. So yeah. I want them to get better because we enjoy the product overall. Agreed. Um, and also, one other thing is I wanted to mention that this is also a podcast. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. So uh, this usually comes out Thursday morning after uh, our show has aired. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify or whatever, um, yeah, podcasting uh platforms of <laughs> your choice fine podcasting direct fine yeah. podcasting yeah. direct yeah. yes yeah uh so um yeah we'll we'll upload the this episode and hopefully we're we're trying to get better because what we formatted this is a live show or not live show it's a it's a visual show um and so joel does put some funny quirky things in there and he and he has the trailer of obviously that he plays that you won't be able to see but right. you can hear it and then occasionally there's things that happen on our on our TV show that you can't see, like my dog Shaggy is all up in my face right now. <laughs> I decided that he needed to get up onto her lap and sniff her lips for some reason. Yes, I don't know why. Sorry, and if oh. uh, if if you, if you heard any sort of weird thumpings, that was uh, him pounding was on my my, like, my is microphone. This thing going? Is it Sorry one? Sorry about that. So that's what we're is talking about. One? Sometimes things happen visually that you can't really see. They don't really translate to um, you know audio, but I feel pretty strongly that uh i enjoyed listening to it when i'm a, i'm a huge podcast fan so um i was very excited when i got to listen to it it's also us so i'm laughing along and i'm picturing what we were talking about so i'm a little biased on it 
but um yeah i did feel like it was like a it was a good conversation between us and we got some nice critiques from some of our uh friends and um family no just friends just friends but for our friends are kind of like family they and, are and we've taken those notes to heart and we'll try to do things like things like that try to describe if something happens visually <laughs> that you can't see um, hello <laughs> <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do anything like that. She did it anyway. I yeah, did it anyways. Fine. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, Hick so a little hiccup. Uh, but we are back uh, in the swing of things. It is fixed, and we are back. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, I think we left off. Uh, I, I was talking about Anne, saying thanks to Anne, giving the that. thumbs up. Yeah. About the podcast. All right. So the next thing we need to talk about is uh, the movie that we watched last night. Are you excited to talk about this, Joel? So the movie, no. the movie that we watched yes. last night was Assassination Nation. <clears throat> uh, this is a different Nation? kind of movie than we have watched. I feel like I mean, there's well, no, there's been a couple of like bigger budget, like higher, not quality, bigger production value, yeah, yeah, higher production value. Because bigger budget does not dictate better. No, you're right. Um, you are exactly right. This is a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of an oddity. Kind of fits in with our. Our theme, though. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm going to read the synopsis. synopsis. So, high school senior Lily and her three best friends live in a world of selfies, emojis, snaps, and sex. But when their town of Salem is besieged by a massive data hack, resulting in half the citizens' private info spewed into the public view, the community descends into anarchy. Lily is targeted after being falsely blamed for the hack and then bands together with her friends to survive a long, blood-soaked night. I should have remembered the synopsis because there's a lot of things that happened in the movie that I was like, oh! <laughs> and then I'm like, hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We were trying to figure out kind of how back of the thing. part A got to part B. And so... Yeah, yeah, was... we were trying to figure it out the whole time and it was a very suspenseful. Because we knew the basic thing because of this. Uh, yeah. But that was it. We didn't know... A whole lot about it because we so much to go in you know, kind of blind so to speak right so um okay well should we pull up our friend the trailer who is right next to you you're looking right at it right where shaggy is mm -hmm. oh yep yeah see careful. this is this is the kind of thing that people can't see when they're listening to she us. likes to uh tell me where the trailer literal trailer is coming from i'll bring it in sometimes it'll make noise it's and cute. Sometimes it'll do things. That Maybe she you should do that. How it's gonna? Every time do it should make a noise. That way, like the people know that the trailer's here. Beep beep. Okay, and then she says, you know, yeah, like things where, about where it is that? It's, yeah. it's a running joke, but it's funny. It, I think it's funny. <laughs> I'm hilarious. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a I'm hilarious to myself only. No, um, okay, so we're just going to pause it for a second. Joel's going to roll that trailer, that beautiful bean footage, if, if you want to say. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be right back. You may think I'm exaggerating. But this is the story of how my town, Salem, lost its mother mind. I will warn you though, it gets pretty graphic. Fucking pussies! You're not kidding it, I'm on your side here. promise you, this is a hundred percent a true story. All right. What'd you think of that trailer? That looks like a mess. I wonder if uh, Joel threw any fun noises in there. A hot mess. There was a lot of noises in there on its own. I don't uh, know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Sometimes he likes to throw in extra bodily function noises. So if you hear any tootins... Oops. Yeah, especially <laughs> for you who are listening on this uh, auditorily, audi orally, orally. Yeah, a u r a l l y. <laughs> orally. Just funny. I know it sounds weird. Through your um, ear holes. If you're listening on your yeah, 
your AirPods or your earpods or your earbuds or your ear holes or whatever. Uh, yeah, if you hear weird noises in the trailer, that's, that's probably why. Um, or it's just the trailer, especially if it's something like Blazing Saddles. There's a lot of fart in that movie. I guess. All right. So, it's Mr. Just, just Mr. Mr. Dud. Yes? Tell us all about the said movie. So, I always take notes. Again, this is a visual thing, so you can't see it there. But um, on my notes, sometimes I draw pictures. This time I drew... Um, a, Looks like a turtle. Kind of a jawless headed guy and then a, a, a smiley face with a, a bullet hole. A bullet hole in his head or her head, their head, its head. There. Um, because I just, you know, the movie kind of, that's kind of felt like the movie, kind of like the Watchmen sort of, you know, kind of this dark smiley face thing going on. Um, and so, incidentally, real quick. I meant to mention this earlier on, but I got sidetracked because we were talking about the glitch that we had happen. Um, I wanted to mention that our one-year anniversary is coming up. Oh, yeah. And there was something. Um, just so you guys know, fun fact at home. For our one-year anniversary watching, for Tingler. Right. For our <laughs> one-year anniversary of doing the show, which uh, does not necessarily jive with the amount of episodes we've done because there's been reasons in the last year where an episode hasn't happened or whatever and so uh, the numbers will not add up to 50 uh, two. two episodes um but it 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 will be one year since we had our first episode air um but the the fun thing is with the whole reason why dollar store drive-in started was because of valentine's day my wife over here came up with an idea she said how about for valentine's day because i mean some people don't celebrate it. Some people go, you know, buck wild with it. We are of the mind that we kind of celebrate things anytime, all the time, every day. So she's like, no more than 10 bucks, go out, buy some stuff. And um, then we'll, you know, have dinner or whatever. And that'll be Valentine's Day. And we don't mean like going out getting fancy, just like, you know, dinner. Either. Yeah. So I feel like you should celebrate all of the holidays because life's too short not to have fun. So the very first, was the very first year that we did that? Uh, or was it, it was, well, it was obviously. I think a, last year a, was the first year we really did it. Because like, do you remember? It was two years ago because we started <laughs> Dollar Store Drive-In on our YouTube channel. Yes. Um, which is backslash at the newly That's when it was. Com, which, yes. or, I'm sorry, backslash at the newly deads, which I'll put that up here. But for those of you who are listening. Uh, so yeah, it was, I think, two years ago. Yeah. What she did was she bought... Um, a bunch of just random like horror type movies from the Dollar Tree. Yeah, back when the dollar store was just a dollar, not a dollar twenty five. So she bought me like I, five I, of those. Yeah, I bought you five of those and then I bought some like um a snacks. Box, box of Twinkies. Yep. Um basically it was like a, a, a movie night kit. Like she's mm -hmm. like, here's some here's some bad movies or potentially bad I was movies. Very proud of it. And um from that the idea was um just stated that Perhaps we should watch the movies and report about them on a uh, show. And then we came up with the idea of Dollar Store Drive-In because we loved the last drive-in with Joe Bob. And we they were purchased at the Dollar Tree, so hence Dollar Store Drive-In. And from that, Genesis has then turned into this now, what you are watching or listening to, or this year-long um, on Tinker Television and even almost a year prior to that on our YouTube channel episodes would pop up. I think there was eight of them on there before we Project of ship. Love. So it was born out of love, just like the Newly Deads was born out of love. And I had to share that with you because Valentine's Day will have happened by the time you've seen this. Um, but our one-year anniversary, you'll know when it happens because we have we have plans for the, that episode. Um, so it's not it's it's based on the date, but not on the number of episodes. So anyway, Assassination Nation is from 2018, currently sitting at six. Point zero out of 10 on the Internet Movie Database. Um, this was written and directed by Sam Levinson, who is known for directing uh, Another Happy Day and Malcolm and Marie. Neither of those movies look anything like Assassination Nation. Mm. Like, zero. Like, nothing like this movie. Uh, the movies that they have written, aside from these movies that I mentioned already, uh, they also wrote uh, The Wizard of Lies, Deep Water, which I know probably sounds familiar, but it's not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. And a movie I've actually seen, Operation Endgame, which is a action comedy movie that has like Rob Codry and a bunch of other people where they're all like shooting at each other and trying to murder each other. 
Um, it's actually pretty good. It's not like the greatest movie ever, ever, but it's definitely worth a watch, especially if you have, you know, you'll see it at the Dollar Tree, actually. If you um, are on a Saturday afternoon, you got a bucket of popcorn and a soda and some time to kill, watch it. It's worth it. Yep. Uh, this stars one Suki Waterhouse, which you may know from Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which is sitting on the shelf. She was also in The Bad Batch, which uh, if you've not seen it, it is a weird post-apocalyptic movie that has Keanu Reeves, Jim Carrey, and Jason Momoa. If you can put those three together in your head, then you've got the movie. It's it's bizarre, but it's it's good. Um, and she was in Feature World, which is one that has been on my list for several years, but I've not seen yet, uh, which stars Mila Jovovich and is kind of a Mad Max. Um, oh, Dave Frank, or not, I'm sorry, not James Franco, not Dave, is also in it. Looks interesting. Again, post-apocalyptic thing. Looks kind of Mad Maxy. Um, then we've got Joel McHale. Good name for somebody. McHale. It's a good name. I mean Joel, actually. Uh, who you may know from a little TV show called Community, which has come up on the show before. Uh, he was in the uh, Workaholics movie Game Over Man. And I say it's not actually Workaholics. It's the guys from Workaholics, their movie. Uh, he was in Becky, which is on our list of things to watch. It's the uh, movie about the 14-year-old girl who uh, murders a bunch of uh, racists. Uh, there's a sequel now. And It's a Wonderful Life, which we just watched and have talked about recently. We did. So uh, Joel McHale is very un-Joel un McHale in this movie, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. He's kind of an a-hole. He is kind of, yes. Not kind of. He's a full-on a-hole. He's a full-on bad, bad man. A-hole. Um, <laughs> Bill Skarsgård, who uh, is an, an odd dude, but I really like his body of work so far. In the movie. Uh, he's yeah, not an a-hole in life, I guess. But I, 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 like, I like him as an actor a lot, actually. He's very charismatic. Yeah, he's a very interesting, a very interesting uh, style of acting. Out of all the Skarsgård, they're all good, but yeah. he's He's just got this like creep movie. factor that's kind of like very intriguing and like, you know, he's Pennywise, for crying out loud. Georgie? Like yeah. uh, the first movie on my list here, Barbarian. Which, if you've not seen it, oh, so good. Don't know. Don't read anything about it. Just so watch it. good. But Bill Skarsgård in that movie, he was perfect for that character because you wanted to think he was a weird, creepy serial killer, but then you're not sure if he is, or if he's a good guy, or if he's a bad guy. You just don't know. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other how it turns out, but it was perfectly cast. Um, he was also in, as she just said, Pennywise in It chapters one and two. And he was most recently in John Wick 4, not most recently, one of the most recent John Wick, um, playing the main main bad guy in that. Good role for him. Young actor, expecting good things. Um, I should have put the movie in there that, uh, oh, Boy Fights World. It's not on my list here, but I'm really geeked about this movie. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, look it up. Uh, he is buff as F. And finally, Maude Apatow, I wanted to put in here because Judd Apatow, yeah. um, if you don't know who he is, is... Big name uh, director, primarily of like dramedy movies. Um, but Maude is his daughter, and she was in Knocked Up. This is 40, which is the sequel sort of to Knocked Up. Was she a little kid in that? Yeah, she was, oh. she was young. Um, and then Funny People, which is a uh, very... It, it's Again, he's good at dramedy, like comedy that is also yeah. very dramatic. Yeah. Um, but in this, Maude Apatow was... Um, a little bit more grown up, uh, teenager, but uh, yeah, it was an interesting turn for it. But I just had to bring it up because she is the daughter of, of Judd and Leslie Mann. Yeah. So at this point, my wife turns to me and says, What'd you think? And I'm going to say, Well, let's talk about it. Mm, okay. Because I, I don't know what else to say there other than, you know, we should talk about it and figure it out. Um, so on the internet movie database, we, when I was looking at this as, as we were watching, cause I like to, you know, kind of check things and figure out who's who and what's what, uh, this was listed on there cause they have a listing at the bottom, like action or comedy or horror. And sometimes they'll have a couple different, uh, genres listed because it crosses boundaries. This one was listed as an action, comedy, crime, drama, horror, mystery, thriller. And that's pretty accurate. I mean, all those things I would say, yes, are accurate. Yes. Um, it starts out very teeny. And when I say teeny, I mean it. It's it, very uh, Generation Z. Yeah. Like you, if you watch this and you either have teenagers yourself 
uh, you know some teenagers or you, I don't know, know some, like, I already said you know some teenagers. It's, I feel like it if was you are a accurate, teenager, if you are a teenager, I felt like it was pretty accurate as far as. Yeah. Like very much like their, yeah, the, their culture, like the way that they like interact with each other and like, um, you know, lots of, uh, texting and like internet kind of things and, uh, you know, yeah. we're in our forties. So, but it's kind of like, how I like connected. texting and stuff, but I'm that, that was not my experience in high school. That's Just for sure. Very much. Yeah. How, how they are very connected via their devices um and how there is interaction and there's real life stuff going on but a lot of it is you know centered around uh kind of your your internet clout so to speak mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and it deals a lot with um hacking yeah and, and privacy yeah leaked like leaked stuff uh releasing of personal information without permission yeah uh, the, just terrifying you know the quote on the front of this um dvd case or sorry blu-ray case because it's a blu-ray DVD. dvd um it it says it's the mean girls meets the purge and i like a thousand percent believe that that is say, do you think that's accurate yes super um, super accurate i i'd like to point out that i literally wrote on here i'm having a hard time taking notes because i'm get, got so invested in the storyline pretty early on i see I didn't draw a picture and there's a perfect spot for a picture oh yeah Look. I feel like um, it Check was, it no, I feel like it was a little slow. Like it was like a slow moving move, movie in the beginning. Really? Yeah. I felt like the, it was taking a while to get to the action part of things. It was a lot of build up. It was a lot of like, I mean, it was like mystery, right? So I think that was one of the things that it said that it was, right? Yep. Yeah. So um, they had to build up and they had to create this like, world i feel like in order for you to like really get and understand it um it did yeah. say that it was in salem did it say massachusetts it, just it didn't salem. it because it, it for sure did not feel like salem massachusetts yeah. i feel like salem massachusetts feels like um something completely different it's a different vibe but i think that what your estimation on why they yeah. chose the name salem was accurate yeah even though i agree with you it did nothing on there from what i've seen from what yeah. you showed me did not feel like I mean, but there's more than one sale. Yeah. And, and, you know, this isn't giving anything away. I mean, you have obviously see the back of this or whatever, but they're talking about how she's getting blamed for a massive data hack, uh, resulting in, you know, the, the citizens coming after her. So Which I, includes her friends. Yeah. I immediately, as soon as it all started going down, I was like, Oh, okay. I'm like, this to me is like a modern take on like the Salem witch trials. I didn't even catch that. Like, I didn't put two yeah. and two together. And when she said that, I went, uh, The way that, like, because, like, everybody was so upset and so up in arms and, like, wanting accountability for, you know, when the stuff was released and hacked, you know, like, when that stuff got hacked, um, people were, like, the, like, well, I can say the mayor, yeah. right? Like, the mayor was one of them and, like, you know. Um, they, That's they were cool. like wanting his head on a spike, basically, you know, saying like, you know, how dare you, you know, have these disgusting photos and like, you know, this is private life or whatever. And it's not his fault that those things got shared, you know? And so I feel like they were like the Puritans, you know, like all of the townspeople were acting like the Puritan, you know, kind of villagers and stuff. And then they were blaming other people. And, and obviously say, if you know anything about the Salem witch trials, you know, they weren't witches, right? You know, they were normal people and whatever. Um, and so I feel like they were blaming these girls uh, for something that was their own fault to begin with. Like, yeah. you know, you can't blame this on something where, you know, and it even says that, you know, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's falsely, they said falsely blamed for the hack. So, you know, you can't. I don't know. Well, Blame um, these girls for that. I even felt that uh, the the sheriff of the town was like the witchfinder general. Oh yeah. Um, because he took control of the situation and was carting around two of the girls in the back of the police car, mm. trying to find the rest of them. Yep. Which essentially was the role of the witchfinder. I mean, they had like know. pitchforks, and you know, I mean, if they if the only thing that they were missing, yeah, was pitchforks and like, uh, you know, uh, torches and stuff like that. Right. You know, I and, feel like. Th then it would have looked like your your 
normal, like old school, like you know, it was medieval, a very modern <laughs> take on on like the witch uh, trials. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Very, it was it, I never would have caught it because I was so invested in the fact that I knew that there was going to be a bunch of shooty, shooty, bang, bang that was coming at some point. And I was trying to figure out how we were leading up to that because it's not real clear at the beginning. Um, and incidentally, you do get the movie has a complete story. Like you get a finale and a finish and a, it's things are answered and you're satisfied with the, the resolution more or less. Um, but up to that point, it is a very stressful movie. Like there is a lot of very anxious uh, and anxiety building uh, situations. Um, it was nice to see a trans character that was represented uh, in a, in a, a, in a very matter of fact, I feel like not like over exaggerated, like very, uh, like Schitt's Creek where there's, mm -hmm. it's just respectful kind of, and like, you know, like it's like nobody, nobody thinks about it in, as being one way or the other. It's just part of life. Right. You know, I mean, there was obviously some like, and, and it's funny when you watch the beginning of the movie, they go through this whole thing that says this movie has, xyz and blah 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 like you know it was like right not racism but maybe it might have had that there, yeah. yeah it was like racism uh, homophobia like you know blood gore yeah, guts blah, blah 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 trigger yeah it was like all these trigger warnings in the beginning which was very interesting and i you know i like i like that because they're serving your trigger warnings up front <laughs> but um so there's a lot of triggers so there was definitely some homophobia and stuff like that but like I feel like the portrayal of, of the uh, the person who's trans you know is uh um accurate you know like i feel like that's probably what they, they were one of the main characters yeah you know which was very nice and this was in 2018 so it's not super old but it's you know what it's it's dated a little yeah, bit you know, you know? From where it was at um another thing that i really appreciated about this movie and i think was probably one of those big surprises was the cinematography was amazing oh. It was so cool. Whoever did the, did you write down who did the cinematography? I meant to write it down. Yeah, cinematography. Um, the person that did the cinematography, I did look them up. The majority of their stuff was. The shots were just amazing. Uh, for music videos and things. They oh, yeah. have done a couple of movies, but primarily yeah. they were music video directors. But some you of it can tell. was. I feel like music videos, on. you've got like more of a room to like play around with some interesting shots. And like, you know, you've got more, I don't know. I don't, you know what I mean? It's more freedom. Yeah, know? more freedom, and more like more in less amount of time. Yeah, so be creative. Just like really cool shots where like they're like close up on a person and then just like sucks back like as something is happening like and it just it's really neat. They're you like, know, uh, they're like you know short films. Yeah. Essentially. Yep. Um, and then the, I felt like the ending was pretty accurate with yeah. how things probably would have happened. Yep. Um, and I I don't know why, but I really really appreciated and enjoyed the marching band at the end it has nothing to do with the movie specifically. Like it's not like it was mentioned prior to that, but it yeah. just, it was a really weird, but nice touch. And they were playing um, that pursuit of happiness song or whatever, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't remember the name of the song. I meant to write I was it down, it. but <laughs> you were singing along with it. Um, so I, I know we, I've gone on a, a lot, so we're, we're getting short on time. <laughs> Yeah, so we should sorry. probably no 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 it's, it's, the, it's just as much me as it is you there's well, a lot to talk about and there's yeah. stuff i'm not even bringing up in my yeah notes. and we did we and he wanted to talk about the reason I, why I we did to this talk about valentine's day yeah it's important. yeah so all right so on a scale of uh one to five uh sex <laughs> hey, they were texting you know so like oh, it was sex I thought yeah, you had, I wasn't sure. If you I don't know that. what you're going to put up on the screen -E for that. C T S or nope. S E X, and then you T were saying S E X T -E -S, S sects. Just to clarify, it's hard to say sex at home. Yeah, um, sextings. I felt like overall I was pretty pretty impressed with it. It wasn't quite what I was expecting, but not necessarily in a bad way. So um, I'm going to give it a four. Yep. Same. I didn't fall asleep. I was entertained. I liked it. Sparked some conversation. I might um, might watch it again just to kind of see if I missed anything, you know. But I you might. know, it's, it's, a, it's it was not a bit my of a hard watch. But. Yeah, it's not my favorite, you know, movie I've ever seen or anything like that. But it was uh, there were some funny like bits and stuff like that in it too, there like was the girl with the bat. Some stuff, and but <laughs> uh, and then I liked the closure between uh, you know the situation with Diamond and and yes Max that happened. I but agree. I won't agree. say what happened, but yeah. it was a it was a nice little touch. Yeah. 
Um, All right. So yeah. if they don't want to watch this, which we do recommend you do watch it because it's pretty good. Uh, but what would you recommend for them to watch? I went back and forth on this because the obvious answer is The Purge. But that's, that's not what too, I'm going to say. That's not a Joel thing. And <laughs> you can't just say like the obvious. It literally gives it to you on the front of the Right. Blue that's why light. I had to stray away. So I'm going to go with 2020's The Hunt, which is on the shelf. Um, it's not the same movie. He's laying his head on my foot. Um, but it deals with a group of people that are against their will, essentially thrust into a situation where they're being hunted. Um, and the, the reason that I chose it is that same thing happens here. These girls are put in a situation. They didn't choose it. They're thrust in it. Um, there's a lot of, you know, gray area as far as what's right, what's wrong, who's good, who's bad. And, um, there's a lot of very modern, uh, things that are satire, satired. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of very political and, and uh, you know, current events that are lampooned in it. So uh, I feel like that they go would go together as a, a yeah. double feature quite well. And they're both pretty over the top, although the hunt awesome. is a lot more gory. Great. All right. Well, I'm not going to blow this up. So what are we watching next week? Oh, right. I don't so want to blow week, it up. We want to put it on the show. <laughs> chosen from the big box of fun, we have. Oh, Evil Little Things. Yes, Zach Galligan is in this. From Gremlins. Yep. And? And what? The second name on there. Oh, Hannah Fearman. Who's from VHS and oh, right. the subsequent Siren spinoff that. film. This looks very interesting. It looks like uh, like Trolls. demonic toys or Boglins or Troll or um, Puppet Master, but all mixed up into whatever this... Like I, it's I, a I've bunch of got, toys or something. Yeah, I'm not gonna oh, I hate when that. they do red lettering. Okay. A young boy finds a mystical toy maker with stories to tell. The first is of a, a leprechaun. Oh, oh, this is. I'm I'm pausing it here for a second. I'm just gonna say, like Joel, I think this is a, uh, anthology. We'll find out. <laughs> He's very uh, not wanting to, to me to keep talking. All right. Uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. The the first is of a leprechaun seeking revenge on a defenseless family the second is of a doll who works evil on her fragile owner and then the toy maker gives the boy a clown named giggles clowns <laughs> are supposed to be the guardians of happiness right these evil little things will cause many sleepless nights that does sound like an anthology and we yeah. love anthology i freaking love anthologies another thing i love narrators I love it when I'm when I'm watching a like a movie or a show and there's a freaking narrator. I don't know why it just gives me all the feels and it makes me feel comfy and cozy. So, in an effort to get this bus out of here in a hurry because <laughs> it's, we both have been sorry, and it's all right. We'll just have to expand this to an hour soon. Um, <laughs> that's not that. Anyway, um, you can find us at thenewlydeads.com. That is your one-stop shop for everything. So you want to know about us this, and all the things we're working on and all the things we put out there. Go there. We'll leave it at that. For those of you who've seen the show, you already know the rest of the drill. Well, you Listen can also to your old say, episodes. yeah, you can also say well, they can find us on YouTube and Spotify. And a bunch of other places. And a bunch of other places. Everywhere you want so, to yeah. be. Go to our website. website, though, because we've got blog posts and all sorts of fun things on there now. Joel's been a busy little beaver. So. All right. And then until next time. <laughs> Keep it cheap and creepy and speedy. Thank <laughs> you.